Looking forward to seeing you all at this dynamic and soul-stirring event. We are also announcing our evangelism and powers and carefully to this week's announcements. The month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness. We are asking all our men, men, women and children, if you could wear something. Oh, he got it going on, so don't look at me. <laughs> he ran! And he, he ran, he ran, he says, come. He was a man of hospitality. Somebody say hospitality. hospitality. You want to activate the promises of God and God put things back in your life? I want to take you to the process here now. It just don't happen straight. Tell somebody high five and tell them there are no quick fixes. Come on. Tell them there are no quick fixes. Mm -mm. This is not a tire patch. This is not a quick patch to get you going. They're no quick. He, now this man is in the right shape, right mind, and so even though his body, as God said to him, yet physically he's got some things going for him. He ran. The Bible says he ran. And he opened his arms and says, come on, please. Well, he ran again to Sarah and said, Sarah, I want you to cook. This girl is a good cook. And she said, I want you to make some curry go quickly. <laughs> Get some, some curly goat, get me some, some nice balmy, set this thing together. And Mary Sarah said, I feel like she said, he, he dressed, the Bible said, he dressed a, a young man and he was able to get that thing together and entertain. This is a man of hospitality. Before God's promises can be activated in our lives, we have to be hospitable. Amen. If you don't entertain God, don't entertain people, have no time with guests, guess what I'm saying? The promises of God comes with those that God sends to you. He can magnify. He can send it. We are so close to the times and we want things from God. Did you know the Bible says sometimes you entertain strangers, you entertain angels? Hospitality back in the east there. Because the angels watch you short three months before and then came again that three more months. And within that three months time, they had some visitation from God. When God is getting ready to put things together, there will be some suddenlies in your life. There will be some visitations in your heart and in your home. In this season, in this final quarter of 2023, I declare over you on this day that there's going to be some visitation. Not just visitation for visitation's sake, but visitation that will turn into habitation. Somebody say, God is moving my visitation. Me from visitation to habitation. He just don't want to visit us. He wants to live within us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Come on, give him praise. The question is, can God fix this problem between Abraham and Sarah? Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty. I'm a great fall. And look what happened to Humpty. He cracked up. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. So they took little Humpty Dumpty now. All the king's men. Came, come on, let's see if we can put these cracks together, these broken pieces together. And all they realize, no. And so why? The first thing I want to remind us today is this. Why take me to the king's horses and not to the king himself? Amen. The psalmist David reminds us being a king also. Being a king, he says in Psalm 20 verse 7, he says, some trust in chariots. Give me some more the microphone, please. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will what? Trust in the name of the Lord our God. There are times in our lives when our lives can become so fragmented that we want somebody else to fix it. Somebody to pour something on us and fix it. Some psychiatrist and psychologist to put it together. But may I remind you today that you pull your faith out from those places as if it's your only hope and put it on Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can help you. The psalmist reminds us in Psalm 33 verse 17, a horse is a vain hope for salvation. Even great strength cannot save. The horses speaks of power and strength that pulls the cart and the king can put you back together. And in this nursery rhyme, there is a lesson to be learned. That all the king's horses, all the king's men, all the kings, because they look at the strength of the horse, and the horse seems to be more strong or stronger than the king. And that is sometimes what stymies and blinds us 
We look at systems, we look at people, we look at our financial account, we look at our investments, and those things blind us from trusting in God only to realize when the bottom falls out. Guess what? That stuff can't save you. It can't help you to, to finish. It can't get you where you need to go. Why? Best friends and all of that. No, because your hopes, your hope is built on nothing else. Yes. Jesus is blood and righteousness. Take your hope and confidence out of people. The arm of flesh will fail. People are going to come into your life and they're going to be there for a moment and they're gone like a bad habit. They're going to let you there, promise you, but you must say goodbye. Sometimes you can pray with them, you can be at their deathbed, you can be at their families, loved ones, funeral, and they will, I mean, they're packed their bags and they're gone Yes. in your life. Amen. This is a reality of a life where men will come into your life, love you. You're the best thing since sliced bread. They see the twinkle in your eye. And guess what? That same love relationship that you put that way some women can't put themselves back together. They're so fragmented. Why? Your hope and confidence has been in men so long. They're your they're your knights of shining armor. They're everything to you. They allow you statues to be involved in church, singing praise and cleaning, doing something. You meet a man all of a sudden, you gone on the beach on Sundays. You gone, tipping point you to the two That has a good time. But where is your passion for God? Where is your faith in God? And when the bottom falls out, then you're back in church. Oh sweet Jesus, help me. He loves you, he cares about you. Stay with Jesus. He's tempting with men, serving God, playing the music. Serving, preaching, teaching, Sunday school. All of a sudden, somebody comes in your life and pulls you away from there. You put your trust in the king's horses and in the king's men. But not that God. Still, when you're broken and fragmented, they cannot help you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said to you, by this time next year, I'm giving you a time right. When God says things like that to you, he wants you to live in a season of expectation. First, we know it's not immaculate conception, so Abraham and Sarah had to get busy. And when doing such, there was an expectation of fulfilling that which God. God is able to fix things. What is your life before that I know the goal. I know the plans that I have toward you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future and expecting it. So I know how long this job is going to last. Abraham, about this time to next year. God knows somebody high five somebody tell me. God knows. God knows. I know God knows. what to do. I've got one egg reserved for Sarah. One egg. That's all. That's all you need, Abraham. And I'm going to give you the unction and the junction to function. Amen. One egg. I've got one egg preserved. You know people talk about freezing the eggs these days. Yes, yeah, since back then, God throws sin. God restored to me the joy of thy salvation. Then will I teach sinners your way and they shall be converted. Somebody shall fix me, Lord. It's You've been hurt and abandoned by men, by family, by friends, by loved ones, church folk, all of that stabbed you in the back. You're walking with hurts and brokenness, fragmentation in your soul and your body since the last broken relationship. You're broken up. You can't trust again. It's hard for you again. But I pray in this month, in this time, that God will fix you. My God, we're in the Humpty Dumpty's here today, walking around to going to all the king's horses. What are you going to do if the government shuts down?